Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Jack and today I'm going to talk about Chinese musical culture and how different music can be in another country. In a time where racial tensions are at an all-time high, one thing links us all together, and that's music. I was born in Beijing, China, and lived there for nine years before moving to the U.S. Almost all of my childhood memories were made in a completely foreign country that most of you may never have even been to. With the tension between the U.S. and China being so high at the moment, it can be very hard to see and appreciate the extraordinary musical culture that was produced in a country with more than 4,000 years of history. Today, I'm asking all of you to sit down with me, tune out everything that's going on in the world right now, and listen to some music. This includes both Chinese and Western instruments, such as the violin, guitar, piano, and Chinese instruments such as the gu zheng, or the Chinese zither in English. This instrument is a very large wooden instrument that you play like a flat guitar on a stand. It has a very echoey sharp noise. Arhu, a two-string violin that is very high-pitched and can replicate animal noises and human noises. Gizi, a type of bamboo flute that, that has a reed inside the tube and produces a sharp edged sound, and Qin, a Chinese guitar that is played vertically, which takes a lot of skill. More than 70 types of ancient Chinese musical instruments have been discovered in archaeology exhibits. Archaeologists unearthed a flute in China that is about 8,000 years old. Music has always been a part of ancient Chinese musical culture. Music in ancient China was used for pleasure and religious ceremonies. There's also many more uh, performances to, for dancing and entertainment and to match the blend with the sounds of nature. Some more of these instruments include the xiao, a type of flute that you play vertically instead of horizontally that is a very round and warming sound, more than the bamboo flute because of the lack of the reed inside the tube. The gong, the suona, which is a double reeded instrument that's played like a nobo but sounds and looks more like a trumpet and the bian zhong, which is different sized bells used for different sounds. With more than 4,000 years of documented history, the ancient Chinese are one of the oldest civilizations on the planet. Despite this very vast history filled with music and art, a great majority of the Chinese people don't seem to appreciate traditional Chinese music with parents in China pushing their kids to pursue Western instruments such as the piano and violin. These beautiful Chinese instruments are going extinct. Even though traditional Chinese music isn't very relevant even in China itself anymore, uh, in Chinese shows and plays, one of the shows called Jingju, or directly translated into Beijing Opera. It is made in Beijing and people on the stage perform a scene, which is usually a little peek into history. People wear different makeup or masks for, for different character types. There's different categories inside the place. There's Sheng, the male lead, Dan, the female lead, Jin, the supporting male lead, and Cho, the jockeys or clowns. And then there's the pit, the instruments behind every scene and play. But the most important part is the music. It indicates what's happening. Is it calm? Is it a fight scene? Is it a traveling scene? 
You can't tell as much without the music. Everything is made more clear with the background instruments. There is a type of music for every scene. No matter how much you agree, it's an important part of every play. But it's not just the Beijing opera that relies on music. It's other plays as well. Everything is carefully planned out and has music coordinated to it. Which, when it has the background support, everything gets enhanced. In the end, I think we can all agree that music is not just a part, but a main part of Chinese culture. Thank you.